Okay, welcome. Right, in this lecture we're going to, I'm going to show you how to create a kind of Thomas Whittleback style clay brush like this. So what I did to create this was I went into one of the Mad Cap common materials, such as this one here, and then I just started to play around with it. Now as well as creating this material, we're also going to show you how to set it up so it appears inside your library, inside here. Um, so let's go into material and we've got this one on this material at the moment so in that material so what we're going to do is go down to the modifiers down here now what I suggest you do is just move this over to the side and have a detailed model so you can see how much it picks up we're going to go to material we're going to make sure modifiers and then inside these modifiers we're going to make some changes to this to get it to change color so um, we can play around with these settings quite a lot to change the intensity of it um, Colorize you're going to see that some of these are set on zero, so they've got no effect But other ones have got actual changes to the actual um, Things like cavity detection. So if I was to turn this down, you're going to see less cavity detection in there and You could have it so there's none at all, but we want cavity detection We've also got the opacity of it as well, which we could take down. So you've got a lot of control over this, and we've also got the intensity as well. So if I run it really intense, I can really dial that up uh, there. And we've got a B intensity as well for that inner shadow. So what I quite like to do is to kind of put it like this. So I've got quite a lot of intensity. So this is gonna be a little bit different to the other brush that I created. For a kind of kind of whiting effect as it were and we've got also got depth control in here to give it more depth so again it pulls it out and you've got this secondary depth one as well that you can push back so you've got real control over the depth with this clay remember this is just the default clay brush so what you're going to see here is inside here we have control to change some of the saturation settings so if i turn start to turn this up it's going to go more towards the blue um, but we can actually shift things using the um, hue shifter as well. So if I want to make it more of a greeny color, I can come over to the green hue shift here. And remember it's basing off this shading and we can just go and input more of that in there. Um, we could also take away or add to the color. That's, no, it's just the colorize. And we got a hue shift there which I can change so I've got a saturation setting even on the cavity B which is called the cavity B which I can also shift so I could take the intensity of this down a little bit shift that this way and you can see quite quickly you can get a really good effect now I can also sort of monochrome it up although that might not have any effect because I'm on let me just put these up you can see it has got an effect but my saturation is quite high so you can really kind of play around and you can target things I'm going to turn the monochrome off increase that and then maybe just take these down in saturation so I'm taking a bit of that saturation away but of course I can tip it towards another color so to see it clearly what I do is I put this saturation up then I kind of just move this one until I get it to the color that I want let's go for something like that that's quite nice and I'll bring that saturation down on it now, like I said, that cavity detection or the intensity of that cavity can be increased so that it's not such a knock on effect. And then you get something like this. Um, so once you're happy with a material and that shows the material off really well, you can actually come in here and you can save that material out. So I can now call that um, jewelry brown or something or let's call it jewelry brown and that's a z brush material so you can see i've already got my ju um, jewelry clay that i've got in there 
So I call it brown and then I call it underscore clay so it kind of matches up with what I've already got. And I'll save it. And notice I've put that in section um, nine, but actually I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to click save. So now you've got that. If you exit out and you need to get that material up, you can go to brush, load brush, go and find the material. Sorry, load brush, load material and click that. And then it will come in here as this material. So which you'll have in here there. So to get that material, which is on my desktop to appear in here by default, so if I exit out of ZBrush now, pretend I'm happy, and I go no saves to that, and I open ZBrush back up again, you're going to see inside here that that material isn't available. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to come up to material, and you'd have to go load material. You'd need to find it on your desktop, double click it, and now it will be in here. You can see like this one, but we want to get it so that it appears in here automatically. So to do that, what we need to do is find the location of where the materials are inside the ZBrush folder. So if I close this down now, not going to do any changes. And what we're going to do is put this in the correct place. So what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to your programs files, and then you're going to go into Pixel Logic. Now mine's a little bit different because I've got my some of my programs on an external drive, so um, as a spare drive. So my order of my things probably going to be different to yours. So you need to locate your basically your Pixel Logic main folder. Go into it, ZBrush 2019. Then you need to go down to what says Startup. Double click that, and in here you're going to get Startup Materials and all the other startups. In fact. So I want to go into materials and if you look in this materials, you're going to see that I have my jewelry clay brush in there. Now, if I just drag from my desktop, this into this folder, this new jewelry brown clay that we created, and I now open ZBrush up. Now you can't do it with ZBrush live. You need to shut it down and restart it. That's important. Okay. So now I'm in here. If you click in here, you're going to see your material. So once again, I'll load my tool in like so. And now I can go and select my material and it's in there ready to use. This free lecture is brought to you by Mojo Mojo Design and is a lecture from my Jewelry Design in ZBrush 2019 Next Generation Techniques course to be found in the, on the link below. So if you want to check this course out, you can visit uh, my site at courses.mojomojodesign and there you'll find full information about this very, very in-depth course. These are the sections and the lectures of this course. It's absolutely huge and I'm adding to it all the time.